You've got a static website using the front end framework of your choice. You've got an API in the back end that you're going to be deploying to Azure, but you want to develop locally. Let's mash on that. Sorry. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, Jim is going to teach me all about static web apps. What I am going to do is show you what I've learned so far about um, static web apps. So a couple of things. There's going to be some tooling that you're going to need to get in here. I'm going to, I'm going to start with some caveats already. I was not the kind of person who was running with NVM or Node Version Manager. I recommend whatever platform you're on, get that going because you're going to find very quickly that you're going to run starting to run into library problems. Um, when we were talking about this before, more casually, we kind of, you know, I, I made the comment. We've been talking about high concept count, and I think this is one of those things. But if you're coming to the table as a developer already and you're working on front end development and you've had some experience with Azure Functions, a lot of this stuff is going to make a lot of sense really quickly. So I've got an application here that I'm basically just working on. I've, I've got an API in here. I've got my source directory for my front end framework. In this particular case, I've done a new. have already done. So I've created um, my um, API folder. I've created an Azure Functions project and those kinds of things. And then I've created my source folder for my front end and I've got view set up and I can compile to a disk directory. And so I can actually show that right now. I can do something like uh, npm um, run serve. And I can go to a open up a browser here and oh that's a, a another page there that we got going on i'll just do this instead this is you know we're we're um we're experts so we are we have never once revealed secrets that we then had to recycle <laughs> on azure on our stream um so here i've got something where i've got um a mapping site that's trying to re request some data um if we had a look at the source code on it we'll see that it's um it's trying to get oh this isn't the part that i wanted to be looking at it's um doo -doo -doo -doo. where am i in the webpack internal stuff webpack internal let's have oh, a look so mm -hmm. Uh, this guy. Here we go. Um, so it tried to get some stuff from an API and it failed. It got some, you know, some problems with this or whatever. So um, that's because my API is not running. But um, you know, alternately, I can probably fire this guy up and say, um, just get my that same site running or a, a different site. Actually, it's my API site. Now this is one served by npm, like uh, just through the. Uh, through the, the front end tooling. This is sort of through the back end tooling. So this is running on, um, uh, I've got Azure Functions Toolkit running here locally. And I can call my get sites API method. It's just a HTTP triggered function. And those things are working separately. I want to get them working together. That usually involves things like cores and um, trying to get both of the things hosted and you're starting to worry already about things like how am I going to deploy this with, you know, um, how am I going to de deploy the static site? How am I going to deploy the API? How am I going to get them to talk together? How am I going to do authentication and all of these things? And these are concerns that come up on every application. And so they've kind of taken this idea that where they've said, um, you know what, let's, let's start to build those things together. Let's admit that these are part of the, the real workflow of, of a lot of developers right now and start to piece it together. So instead of running these two things separately and trying to get them to talk together, we're going to run them together through the static web apps command line interface, the CLI for static web apps. So I simply do um, SWA and I give it the path to my, um, my front end output, um, which will be do 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 um what's the dist oh my gosh okay SWA uh dist I just did an NPN run build just before we started recording so that does my my production 
um, bits, and then I can just do uh, and say where my API is hosted. So in doing this, the framework is actually going to look to see um, what's in that dist directory and then can it serve those assets up and then what is in the API directory and can it figure those bits out and it understands Azure functions right now. And so when I just type that simple command, it's going to start to wire this thing together for me and magic happens. Oh, we forgot a command start. Computers are really specific. Yeah. They're like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad they are though, because I feel like a non-specific computer is going to cause problems in the long run. I'm, I'm kind of excited about, um, what's going on with like the new code generation saying, build me a program that does this. I know it's not that specific yet, but it's going to get there. It's going to get there. Maybe. I don't know. We've been on that path at least 20 times since the 1980s. Uh, so. This is true. This is true. Um, okay. I have run into a problem already and I think I know what it is actually. Um, the, uh, because I was running before, I think I've already got a host up and running. I might pause at this point and just re run that oh, okay functions requested tech but no endpoint configure was found so we have uh, to pass in dash dash api it looks function. like it's serving static content there but i don't see anything about it serving an api oh right okay so, so we're going to do dash dash api in front of that there we go okay that looks cooler Hey, right on. Okay, so this did a couple of things. Um, we're just going to leave that in there. Under panic. Um, but now if I refresh this guy, of course, um, the methods that were in the API were called. Now, here's the cool thing. Th this starts to look really cool really quickly, and this was the aha moment that I had, but basically this is just an automated way to wire up a reverse proxy and put everything onto the same port. This is going to be how it runs out in the cloud. And it's it's beautiful because it does some other things. I'm going to see if I can figure this out. I think there's like, um, I'll, I'll have to, uh, do, 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 do. there is a um, an authentication endpoint that's served up as well through the, um, through the endpoint. So it allows you to do local emulation for authentication and then that is taken care of locally you get a token back and and all of those things whatever we're going to do another episode where we look at emulating twitter authentication and doing something here but in effect this what this has done is it's allowed me to take a built client and specify the directory of my api and it actually builds it out but so this is mounted so this is mounted like the API endpoint on slash API. So if you look at um, the calls that were made, I think this is what you're asking here. I'll just refresh okay. this. But um, the trigger me is just going to 4280 API trigger me. So this is, it's already aware of how to, like because of the reverse proxy and both of those th things sitting behind it. Um, like likewise, I can, you know, my, um, uh, my port here for um, the API is already up and running, so I can go here and go to et cetera, et cetera. Like these, these are actual like working bits right now, right? Right. So that would be the actual like API proper that's being served up from there, and right. then there is a proxy on port forty two eighty that you have there as well, um, which is smart enough to serve up both the, the HTML content and the API content. That's right. With the API being proxied through to that port 7071. Exactly. Now, yeah. what's cool is that I might not actually have, uh, or I might already have something else running. In which case, rather than telling it to go to this dist, I can actually just give it like HTTP colon lo uh, local host, um, 4545 slash whatever, and then it can do that. And likewise, I can give it an, uh, an endpoint for my API as well. So, okay. so, that, so that's going to handle like all of the, the restarting and all of that stuff. So 
because I, I was concerned that we were pointing this at like a static disk directory and then I would have to recompile Bingo. my JavaScript each time. But exactly. It look like that. That's right. So let's um let's get that started. So we'll do an npm uh, run serve and that's going to come up. Ba -ba -bam. And that's on localhost 8080. So I'm just going to copy that. I, not that I need to. I'm sure I can do this. Okay, so we'll go cd. And then I do API API. And it's going to go off and do the building for me. And everything seems to be up and running. It's using that dev server for static content and it's servicing the API uh, from this location. Everything's wired up. Now I'm going to go to 4280 and we're going to see that that still works. But we'll just prove that the hot reloading is actually still happening. Gosh. It's like you could read my mind about what the next thing was that I was going to ask. Um, the next thing that Simon is going to ask about is cinnamon flavored apples. And as I save that, bada bing, bada bing. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's really seamless. I like that a lot. Was actually really surprised. Um, I I was kind of expecting there to be like a tight tools lock in, and the reason for that is how they walk you through the workflow. I think if I had started with the idea that this was the reverse proxy config for you happening automatically, then I think that I would have been in a better mindset. So I was really skeptical on this going all the way through. Now, what I mean by that is the tutorial actually walks you through cloning a view template from a GitHub site and then using tooling here to create a an Azure function and to create a local functions project. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what dependencies are they bringing in? What are they, what are they loading up and tying me into? And it's like not that at all. Now that said, I, the the tooling is actually pretty great. I can just go through this. I can you know create a new project. I can put have that out in. Um, Cool project that I've got on this particular one. You can see it's running right now, so it has these um, endpoints in here. But I can create a new one. Uh, kit and caboodle is something that, um, because I've, I've, you know, like I can actually um, create this static web app locally, and it's going to do things like configure the GitHub actions for me. So that I can, I think it might actually even be in here if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, here it is. So this actually is a con is configured such that when I, um, when I run it, it actually will just push it out into the cloud, and all of the things are tied together through the GitHub action. It does the secrets management. It does it does all of the things. So I'm actually really, really impressed for, for two reasons. Number one, the tooling doesn't bind you into anything that requires a dependency on weird stuff that's all magic. And number two, all of the artifacts of the build process and the ability for you to edit those things, swap out existing APIs or front ends, you bring your own build tooling um, for your front end framework. All of those things are there. Simon, I'm a fan of this thing. I'm mm. like, I, I really like it. And I've got three projects that I'm about to kick off and I'm going to be using this on all three of them. Interesting. So this, um, this GitHub action here, this is just going to build and deploy. It's not going to set up any of the resources for you on Azure. Uh, no, it went out and when uh, it did the deployment, does, does it do the setup? No, I had to walk through when I created the Azure um, static web app. It actually asked me for a target. Um, and I, I think I probably shouldn't drill too far into it right now just because it might, I can't recall what's in the script. Yeah. But um, but it, it does actually go out and um, create things for you in Azure. So when you check this code in, it's going to update it and it will be deployed to Azure and your functions app will be out there and your um, the static app will be properly deployed as well. Interesting, okay. Well, I like that a lot for setting things up quickly. 
Yeah, and for that local, like having that wrapper to run things around locally, so that you're, you know, you're not going to be, it's not going to be out on the cloud where you're running into, you know, reverse proxy stuff for the first time and um, those kinds of things. You're, you don't have to worry about um, uh, maybe how to set up the deployment if you're unsure about those things. So uh, I'm just going to uh, scroll through here really quickly and see. Um, I believe, yeah, look at it. It's got the secrets in there and everything. I just want, I wasn't sure what was in here, but it looks pretty safe. You close, um, yeah, you close the pull request and it's going to push it out for you. And it does all. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nice. So I think we still have some other things to explore. Um, one of them is the authentication and authorization. That's something I'm still working through just to get a, a good sample in. There are some samples out there that are just, you know, like display the logged in user and stuff like that. But I'm more interested in what it means to protect routes and make sure that the token is being passed back to the API and things like that and how to verify those things. So we'll get a bit of a deeper dive on authentication and authorization together and we'll follow up with another sample here. Yeah, I'd like that because uh, the project that I'm looking at using this on, we're not going to be able to use Azure ED for it. So I'll be curious to see what other hooks I can use to get authentication working. For sure. All right. Great. Well, thank you for sharing this, James. I'm excited and I think I'm going to do a little bit more research on this and then maybe kick off my project next week with it also. And we'll have four projects between us working on it. Wow, they're going to be hearing from us. <laughs> I've already got a pull request on the docs out there for <laughs> for it. So yeah, no, they'll be hearing from us for sure. Great. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on this episode of the ASP Dev Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share. And we'll see everybody next week on more static applications or whatever other topic we have. Whatever else we comes up. Mash yeah. on that subscribe button. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye. Cheers. You know what I would actually go for? I would go for like, like an apple cinnamon hybrid. Apple. Like if it was an apple and it had a little bit of a taste of cinnamon like just, in it. Yeah. We should be like an apple pie apple. <laughs> we could get we could get top geneticists working on it where the core is actually replaced with a sprig of cinnamon that somehow infuses the apple as it grows on the tree and it would just be like every bite is apple pie yeah this, this would be amazing like so smart jeez we should collaborate more often <laughs>